holy audacity. That is the subject I'm speaking about. See, the Bible is full of testimonies of a lot of people. In fact, the, whole, the book of Hebrews, you know, chapter 11 is the, is, is the popular passage that we often refer to when we are thinking of men of great faith. You know, in Psalm 107, verse 23, it says that those who do business in deep waters, they see the great hands of God. <laughs> if you want to catch big, you know, that those big fishes, the giant ones, you cannot get them by the edge of the sea. You have to go deep. In the same way, if you want to, to see the hand of God in your life, you must exhibit holy audacity. And nobody, if you're just like every other person, if you're just as ordinary as any other person, what makes you different? It takes great faith to please God. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let's actually look at it. Without faith, it's impossible to, to please God. You can't please God by being ordinary, by doing what every other person does. He says in Hebrews eleven six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We, in, in one of my series, I talked about God's regrets, in which we looked at people who God was disappointed with, like Saul. But there we also saw a man like Noah. Noah was a man of great faith. Imagine being the only righteous man in your time and building an ark by faith. You have God to prepare an ark. I'm going to destroy the world. He hasn't seen the world. He hasn't seen anything. No signs. But by faith, he builds that ark and he saved himself and his household. Without faith, we can't please God. And we talk about people who have great faith today because if, you, if we have nothing to talk about them, why would we refer to them? There are so many people in the Bible that nobody, who, who do things nobody knows about because there was nothing extraordinary about them. If you want to find out more about these great men of faith, read Hebrews chapter 11. There are so many of them. Holy audacity. Today, you can be a person bold, strong in your faith, in your work with God, no matter. Also, in, in one of my series, I also talked about Joseph, a man who, who looked at the, the master's wife in the face and said, how do you expect me to do this? To sleep with you and disobey God. No matter how beautiful you look, I'm not going to compromise my integrity. It takes great faith and holy audacity to stand your ground in the face of every type of opposition, especially today in Africa, where there is, you know, a lot of things, if you are not corrupt, if you cannot bribe people, you cannot do business. And that is why the whole place is like that. But if people are ready to stand their ground, no matter, even Esther, we know, we talk about Esther today, the slave girl who became the wife of, the, of King Ahasuerus. She was not invited before the king, but she, she, she realized that if she didn't do it, her whole nation of the Jews would perish. And she was ready. She told her people, go and fast. I'm going to join you. If I perish, I perish. She was ready to go before the king. Fear, fear and faith are opposite. So you cannot have fear and faith at the same time. And those who are afraid, can't please God. It takes holy audacity to please God. Look at Abraham, your child of promise. And God said to him, go. I want you to go and sacrifice that child to me. And he obeyed God. How about Moses? He was ready to go stand before Pharaoh and say, thus says the Lord, let my people go. Beloved, <laughs> the world is looking for people who are ready to stand. 
ordinariness cannot take you anywhere. Looking at, thinking about what people will say, think and do will not take you anywhere. It takes only a audacity. I've known people who were diagnosed with terminal illnesses who are still alive today because they exhibited holy audacity. I remember the case of a lady. It was published in one of the newspapers. Her child was dead. But she took that dead child <laughs> by faith and held that child to her chest. Yes, here it is. Here is her story. She said, I cuddled my dead boy back to life. It says there that the, a mother who was told her newborn son was dead, brought him back to life with two hours of cuddling. They were told to say goodbyes to, to their son who was born 27 weeks prematurely and was weighing just one kilo. His twin sister survived, but he was declared dead by the doctor who delivered him after 20 minutes, trying to get him to breathe. But after two hours of being spoken to, Cuddled and held, he began showing signs of life. This, I thank God for the faith of a woman like this. Some other woman would have just said goodbye to the baby. But that, not this woman. She held, the, the child was premature. That didn't deter her. She cuddled her child back to life. Some of us give up too easily. You cannot be a person of faith. If you are not ready to fight, you must fight for what is yours and believe. You don't have to believe everything that people tell you. you must be to, For you to have great faith, you must be ready. Look at De uh, David facing Goliath. Oh, his brothers tried to discourage him. He was not ready to listen to them. He knew who he was and he was ready to face. He knew not only who he was, he knew who his God was. He said, you come to me with sword and arm. I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have despised. There is no way that you can take a stand in the name of God and he doesn't show up for you. There are many people. I know Roy Haven, the father of Benny Hinn, that we all know. Dodie Austin. These people were given few days. They had terminal cancer. But today they are still alive, telling their story. So we don't have to cower and live in fear because of what the doctors have told us. What does the word of God say? It was the same thing when God sent 12, then Moses, sorry, Joshua sent 12, 12 spies to go and spy out the land. God has promised them the land. 12 went. 10 came with an evil report. Oh, we're like spiders before them. Oh, they are giants. But Joshua, not Joshua and Caleb, they said, no, let's go. Let's go and possess. They are like grasshoppers before our eyes. Because they knew the God that they served. They were ready to honor God. God is looking for people who will be ready to take a stand for him, no matter what the devil says. I, I shared my story in, um, in my book, How I Stood Up to Cancer. Some of you must have watched the television interview and all that. You know, sometimes when we are told that you have cancer, it's like, oh, your world come to an end. Well, it shouldn't be. Because when you know the God that you serve, you shouldn't cower and submit and surrender to cancer. You can get a copy of this book to find out how through the grace of God, I was able to stand and face this terrible demon that frightens people to death. This demon called cancer. We all don't have to, it doesn't have to take over our lives if you are diagnosed with that disease. Some people have been sent home with terminal illness to go and die. Get a, your own copy from Amazon or from assurancepublications.com. 
in this last day, God is looking for people. He says so in Second Chronicles chapter 16. Who who will make him proud? Who are who who are ready to showcase his power before the enemy? It doesn't matter what your Goliath might be. Do you know the God that you serve? Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am fully persuaded that what I have entrusted into his hands, he is able to keep. Do you know in whom you have believed? My own sister, <laughs> who was ill in the hospital and given a few days to live. In fact, she refused that food. She, she discharged herself from hospital. At some point, she at a point she was completely paralyzed. She couldn't even move. She, by the time she left hospital, she was like a skeleton. She just she was fed up. She decided to try God, and decided to pray for her. She decided to take fruit juices, carrot juice, peanut juice, every type of fresh fruit and vegetable you can think of. Today, if you see her, she's still alive today. This was in. 2003, I'm talking about. She's still alive today. Somebody, when she went back to her consultant after a few, <laughs> after she, a, a few weeks, they couldn't believe it was the same woman that they had given a few days to live. Holy audacity. We don't always have to believe what people say. God has the final say. His word is your final authority. It doesn't matter the circumstance in which you find yourself. Try God and say, dare him. Dare God is looking for people who will dare him. Dare God and see. Say, test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Even David said, I have been young. In my old age, I have never seen God forsake the righteous. He says, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Have you got great faith? If you want to be encouraged, go back. Meditate on the book of Hebrews chapter 11. God is looking for people who are going to make, who are going to make him proud. Who can stand that crown and say, devil, get behind me. Do you have great faith? Do you have holy audacity? Do you want to be one that pleases God? Well, I'm sorry, you can't afford to be ordinary. You must be a man or woman of great faith. It's for today, history makers. History makers, we talk about them today. Can go down from Rosa Parks, who sat down. Think of Martin Luther King. Think of great men. Those who went to Africa. Those who dis made great discoveries. It was by faith. People who conquered mountains. They exhibited great faith. Because we can't fail you. You, you cannot be ordinary and expect to make a difference. You want to be an agent of change. You must have holy audacity. History makers have holy... They do things what people say can't be done. Even G Steve Jobs talked about it. When he came up with the idea of the uh, Apple computer, the Mac computer, they thought it was crazy. Look at the iPad and app and things that, great inventions of today, that things that people thought couldn't be done. God is with you. You might be the next person on the line. Where is your faith? Do you have holy audacity? Are you ready to showcase your God to the world? Do you know in whom you have believed? God is waiting for you. The world can not be changed if you remain ordinary. But you've got something in you that can make you be that agent of change. But you need to be bold, to be strong. That song says, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. It says, though that you be bold and courageous, they do exploits. Are you ready to do business in deep waters with God? To catch great fishes? If you cannot catch great fishes from shallow ground. Cannot be a history maker by being ordinary. You need holy audacity. In these days that we are in, <laughs> ordinariness cannot help in the face of great 
child and to tribulation. You must be bold, you must be strong. And God is waiting on you. Are you going to be counted in the number of those who are to be grateful? Thanks for watching. If this message has blessed you, don't keep it to yourself. Bless somebody else. There is someone waiting out there who is going to be blessed by this message. Remember, it doesn't matter what the doctors say or what anybody says. Your faith can help you to overcome. I know the case of another lovely sister, friend of ours, who had who had lost her first pregnancy. She had twins. The first one got aborted by accident. She lost that one. And the doctors told her she stopped wasting her time. That there was no way the second one would survive after the first one had been aborted. But she was not ready to listen. She knew the God that she said, the God that gave her that pregnancy that she had waited for for so many years. And that pregnancy, she that other child survived. Even when the child was born, what could only fit into the palm of her hand. Today that child is six years old. Where is your faith? Do you have holy audacity to say, well, you can say this, but I know the God that I believe in. I know in whom I have believed. Without faith, we cannot see exploits done, in, even in our own lives. If I, have, <laughs> I wrote some of, that is why I wrote this book. We want to see what great faith can do. Check out this book as well, and this other one, How I Stood Up to Cancer. These are books that would encourage you they make good presents for your friends, for birthdays, for Christmas, for any occasion. Get them and encourage somebody today. Thanks for watching. I pray that God will give you holy audacity to stand that trial, that temptation, that situation you are facing. You don't have to, to bow. Remember those Hebrew children in that fire, that very furnace? They were not ready to bow. It doesn't matter. Majority is not always right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were cast into the fire. They were ready to disobey the king's command. They said, listen, our God is able to deliver us. And he will. Even if he chooses not to, king, we will not bow to your idol. We will not bow to your gods. God is looking for people who will stand their ground like this. And Jesus showed up for them. You see, but the fact is that they were able to add that clause. But if not, even if God chooses not to deliver us, we will not bow to your gods. Today, there are so many gods, idols around. And many Christians are bowing to them in ignorance. Daniel was ready, was cast into the den of lions because they said he should not pray three times a day. And maybe we'll get to the point where your faith will be put on trial. Are you going to stand? Are you going to bow? to pressure, to giving. These guys did not. They were ready to take their ground, to stand. Whether God chose to deliver them or not, they were not going to bow. I pray that God will strengthen us, encourage us, help us to be men and women of faith. Men who will stand their ground no matter the circumstances or situation in which we find ourselves. God bless you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to share this message to bless somebody.